We'll now see how Green's Theorem can help us find an area by doing a line integral. So we're sitting in a situation like this. We've got some curve, positively oriented, we'll call it C, some region that it bounds, we'll call that D, and we have that Green's Theorem says the integral along the curve C of this vector field given by P and Q, so P dx plus Q dy, is equal to a double integral over the domain D of this integrand, dq dx minus dp dy. Now in the particular case that dq dx dp dy, so this thing here, in the case that that was 1, so let's assume that that thing is equal to 1, then this boils down to just the integral over the domain d, dA, which is just the area of d. So we get that this is the area of d if dq dx minus dp dy is equal to 1. And so that means we are able to express the area of a region bound by a curve in terms of a line integral for strategic choices of P and Q. The strategic choice of P and Q means we just need to choose P and Q such that this equation is true. dq dx minus dp dy is 1. So we want to choose P and Q such that dq dx minus dp dy is 1. So how can we do that? Maybe I'll put a little separator bar here. So how can we do that? Well, one way to do it would be to take p to be 0 and q to be x. So that is we are taking as our vector field the vector field 0, comma, x. And what do we get in this case? Well, what we get is that the area is going to be double integral over the domain d, dA. But for these choices of p and q, dq dx minus dp dy is just 1. So we get this equality that the integral of 1 dA is precisely the integral of dq dx minus dp dy dA. And this is equal to, by Green's theorem, the integral over the curve C of p dx, but p is 0, and then q dy. And so there we go. We end up getting that the area is equal to a line integral. And so that was for a particular choice of p equals 0, q equals x. What about if I took a different choice? Maybe instead I took p to be negative y and q to be 0. So in other words, I'm taking my vector field to be negative y, 0. In this case, the area is equal to the integral, or double integral over d, dA, which is the double integral over d of dq dx minus dp dy, dA. And by Green's theorem, that's equal to the integral around the curve of p dx, so that's negative y dx, plus q dy. q is 0, so this becomes plus 0. And so there, again, we've got another expression for area. Area can be computed by this line integral. How about another one? Well, if we took p to be negative a half y and q to be 1 half x, then for this choice, we should get dq dx minus dp dy equals 1, and therefore the area can be computed by the line integral.
let's see that this is the case here. So in this case, f would be negative 1 half y, 1 half x. Area is, again, the integral dA, which is the integral of, because of this choice of p and q, dq dx minus dp dy is equal to 1. So we get this expression. And then by Green's theorem, this double integral becomes the line integral, the integral around the curve C of P, which is negative one-half Y dx plus one-half X, so Q dy. And that's another expression we have for our area. And those are the three expressions that were given up above. We just showed that each of these line integrals can give us the area of the region enclosed by the curve C. So let's see how we can use one of these in practice. So we want to find the area under one arch of the cycloid. So here's our cycloid. Looks something like this. We want to find the area of this region, and we're going to do it by computing a line integral. So the curve we are interested in is going to be the positively oriented curve that is the boundary for this region. So there's our curve that we are interested in. We want to find the area. The area can be found by any one of those three expressions we have above. So which one do we want to use? Well, I'm just going to do one of them. You can feel free to do the other two. I'll pick the middle one. It will be negative the integral y dx. So we are going to write it as negative the integral around our curve C of y dx. And our curve C is that curve C there I've drawn in the picture. So what is our parameterization for our curve C? Well, there's actually two parts of it. There's a C1 and a C2. So let's go ahead and get these two parts. C1 is going to be the curve, we'll call it R sub 1 of t. It's going to be the curve given by x ranges from 0 out to, okay, so we need to know what is that value way out here for the cycloid. That's where y is going to be 0 again. And so that is 1 minus cos of t. So I'm looking at the y expression. 1 minus cos of t has to be 0. So cos of t has to be 1. Cos of t is 1 precisely when we are around to 2 pi. So t is going to be 2 pi. So this is going to correspond to the value of t equals 2 pi. In other words, one, a cycloid is coming about by rolling a circle along uh, the x-axis and just watching what happens to one point, namely the point that started at the origin and it comes back down to the bottom here when it's done one full roll, the wheel has gone through one full roll. And so when it comes through one full roll, that's when t has gone out to 2 pi. So x is going to take on the value t, y is going to have the value 0, and t is going to range through the values from 0 to 2 pi. Now what about the other curve, r2 of t? So r2 of t, what I'm actually going to do is not parameterize r2 of t because that's starting at some point away from the origin and coming to the origin. Might be easier given the equations I have up above. So given these two equations I have up above, I'd like to use those ones. So what I'll do is I will Take x is t minus sine of t, y is 1 minus cos of t. Now I just need to figure out what the values of t range over. Well, it's easier to use the same values I have in the curve c1 and just let t range over the values from 0 to 2 pi. But what that means is I'm not parameterizing c2, I'm actually parameterizing negative c2 because I'm starting at the origin and I'm moving along the curve 
as it goes to the right. And unfortunately, that means it's parametrized in not the positive orientation way, uh, because what I've done here is essentially, I'll draw another curve in, I've done this curve here in that direction, and that's negative C2. But that's all right, because I can deal with that when I start to do the integrals. So I just went for the parametrization of negative C2 because it was easier. So that's our area, which means we can now find our integral for this. It's the integral over C1 of y dx minus the integral over C2 of y dx. But with that negative sign in front of the integral for C2, I can absorb it in there and get the integral plus the integral of negative C2 of y dx. And that is perfectly set up because now I have the ability to compute this integral because I have a parameterization for it. And I have the ability to compute this integral because I have a parameterization for the negative C2 curve. So this is great. I'm all set up. So let's go ahead and finish it off by putting all of these integrals in terms of t. So this is negative. Over the C1 integral, it's 0 to 2 pi. y, oh, y is 0. dx, well, x is t, so dx would be dt. But that doesn't matter because all it is is we're integrating the 0 function. So this is going to be 0. So that first integral, the integral along the C1 curve is 0. And then that leaves me with the integral along negative C2. Negative C2 goes from 0 to 2 pi y is going, uh, is going to be the 1 minus cos of t function. And then I've got dx. dx is the derivative of the x uh, component. And so t minus sine t is the x component. So I'm looking right here. t minus sine t is the x component. Its derivative is 1 minus cos of t dt. And that's the integral we need to compute to get our area. So that's the integral from 0 to 2 pi. We'll expand it out. 1 minus 2 cos t plus cos squared of t dt. And now we're back into uh, calculus 2 mode of just computing an integral. We might as well finish it off here. So it's 0 to 2 pi. 1 minus 2 cos t. What is cos squared of t? Well, I can write that using a double angle formula. And that'll be 1 half plus 1 half cos 2t dt, which means I can continue on and just do a little bit of simplification. So I've got 1, 1 half, so that becomes a 3 halves. I've got a minus 2 cos t, and then I've got the 1 half cos 2t dt. And these are all things we can now integrate. So we get a 3 halves t, the antiderivative of cos of t, that would be sine of t, the antiderivative of cos 2 of t, that would be 1 half sine of t, so that becomes a quarter, sorry, sine 2 t. And that's going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And so that becomes 3 pi minus 2 times sine of 2 pi, that's 0, sine of 4 pi is 0, and then plugging 0 in for everything, they all become 0, and so therefore we get our answer. It is 3 pi. The area under one arch of the cycloid is 3 pi. Now this is nothing new for us. We already know the result because we've done this in calculus 2. As soon as we got into parameterized curves and we knew about areas, we went ahead and we found the area of the ar one arch of the cycloid there. What's new for us here is that we had some choice as to how we could compute this area we converted it to a line integral. And if you fact, in fact you look close enough at this line integral, you might be able to see that this is precisely the integral we had set up in calculus two. We wanted to find the area. We integrated the y function with respect to x. So we integrated over all the heights with respect to x. And because our parameterization was moving from left 
to right in this case, but in fact we wanted it from right to left in order for it to be positively oriented. We had this extra minus sign, so these signs ended up working out. We got our positive answer, but in fact this was the integral we got in calculus 2. However, there was some choice, and I'll leave it for you to go ahead and check that if you set it up by this integral, the integral of x dy, or even this integral, one half of the integral of x dy minus y dx, you'll get the same answer in both of these cases. So this was a bit of theory about the connection that Green's theorem gives us between areas and line integrals, and then one integral where we are interested in finding an area, but it turned out to do that, it was most easily done by converting it to a line integral. All right, so that's it for this part of the video. There's two more parts, and they just consist of two individual examples each. So we'll see you in the next video.